everyone, welcome back to season two of the teacher surgery. I am literally so excited to be back for season two. There is so much that we've got in store for you. This is a place where you know where we have real and relatable conversations and take questions from parents and young people and teachers like yourself and get them answered from teaching professionals across the educational spectrum. We are excited today to have a special guest with us, Colin who runs Gangs United. Colin, I should say your, na your last name, Colin James. Thank you. CEO of Gangs United. We had so many questions last season, Colin, from parents and young people, which is really good. I love that young people are getting involved and asking questions about gangs. And it was a myriad of things. So we would, we'd love to have you here to just go through some questions to understand a little bit more about you and your journey. So, Colin, what would you like as a young man? Um, I, I grew up in a household with my three sisters. Um, I lived with just my single mum. My dad and my mum divorced when I was a month old. Oh, wow. So I never really had the concept of growing up with a father. Um, we lived in an estate in Hackney. And um, we was poor. Yeah. So going out on the road at that time, it was never called road. It was just wearing life. And um, because of poverty, got myself into a lot of crazy things. And then thiefing as a, as a necessity became thiefing as a habit. And then it became a part of life. The older I grew now, um, became more kind of focused more on the road. I got thrown out of school when I was 14. So I was on the road full time. All my friends were still in school. So I was hanging out with older boys on the road and trying to impress them. My kind of bravery or courage kind of stretched. I ended up going to prison um, four times before I was 21. And then, um, yeah, I, I can't tell you how I kind of got out of it. it yeah. Was, it, was a, it was a mixture of a lot of things. Um, what, le what led you to, to, to develop teach Gangs United? Gangs Unite, sorry. Um, I, I was a builder. It was building that broke me from the cycle of crime because um, being thrown out of school at 14, black, no education, criminal record, I've never been employed in my whole life. So everything I've had to do is being self-employed, even Gangs Unite. But while I was building, um, we ended up having 13 gangs in my borough. And I knew most of the gang leaders from my time on the road. Yeah. So it was a kind of smooth transition to be able to speak to them and say, yo, yeah. what's going on in the borough? Because you knew them? I knew them. I've got four sons growing up. A lot of the guys in the gangs was my son's friends. I didn't want my sons to go in the gang. So the only reason or the only way of stopping it was to go out and just speak to the young people. So for about eight, nine years, I did a lot of street work, talking with all the gangs, talk, getting to know majority of the gangs, um, prevented a lot of incidents within Wolven Forest. But what I realised was the gangs wasn't the problem. I focus on gang members, but I didn't really see the limitless damage that um, the gangs was causing to the other young people in the borough. Yeah. And then um, one thing led to a next thing. I started football programs, started boxing programs, weight programs in order to attract the young people. And then I just was left with so much young people, didn't know what to do. So we, we got ourselves a building and um, we've got so many different facilities within the building. Can I just ask you, Colin, because people say this, like we got ourselves a building. How did you get yourself a building? Is it a building like a community centre or a, a space? In my borough, um, we don't get much support because of the way that we work. And I'm a person, I don't give evidence. I don't give information. And the council and the police, they don't like that. So they don't really support us in any way financially or anything like that. We've had to do things off our own back. So we went and we found the building. It costs a lot of money a month, but we found the building and we've set it up. We've got studio in there. We've got building um, workshops in there. We've got classrooms, we've got designer. 
where they can design fashion labels, make hats, make t-shirts and so many different things, so many different programs. I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to make a point. You made a reference in one of the earlier questions that I asked you. You said you grow up in a single household, but equally your drive and your determination to work with gangs was around, actually I had four sons and I didn't want my sons to join a gang. Do you think that fathers make a difference, Colin? Of course, I think that's the problem right now. No disrespect to, to the mums, but I think the mums, they've carried the burden for too long. Yeah. And it's the absent fathers that is, should be their protection really, that are not there. And you find that systematically, the fathers was removed from the home, the mothers was empowered. And then now they are just taking the sons from all the young, from the mothers. I found in my time, this is where I kind of broke down and it was in my older age going through therapy that I realised that I was angry my whole life mm. because I never had a father. I used to beat up children that had mums and dads because um, I never had one. Yeah. And working with young people now, I find many of them are angry because the father's not there and the mums are not strong enough to at times take care of some of these six foot two inch 14 year olds. My role, I play a father's role on the road. I don't make friends with young people because young people don't know the value of friendship. Mm. But playing as a father, people always ask me, how do you tell off those gang members? I say, they're not gang members, they're people, they're children. Yeah, and, um, they're uh, young boys, yes. young girls as and well. And they, they respect me more. Yeah. Because I show that I care and I'm not afraid to come to them and speak to them in that way. And um, when you go out and find the young people, you find most of them, they're, they're trapped. Mm. They're crying out for help, but they don't know how to, who to go to, who to cry out for. They won't tell their parents because there's certain things their parents shouldn't know. And um, the system hasn't got anyone adequate to take care of some of the problems that the young people are facing. Um, Colin, I wanted to, uh, you touched on something and I, I, I want to, I know we're running out of time, but I really wanted to touch on it briefly. You said that you went to counselling and from the young people that you see and that you work with, are a lot of these young people ex uh, um, experience PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder that we see with people that have been in like in conflict, in wars and stuff like that. Are some of these young people, are they experiencing that as well? Yeah, of, of course, they see too much, they hear too much, they know too much, they experience too much, but they've got no one to pass it on to. That's why a lot of young people are having mental health issues at the moment. Yeah. Because they don't know how to offload all that they've seen and experienced. Yeah. And some people, I think sometimes we just relate it to go, oh, people who've been to war, who've seen killings and death and, and like such like the, you know, the grotesque humanity of like man, but actually young people living in the house next door to you can be experiencing the same thing as well. Yeah, of course, it's to, to us, it's, it's a community. To some young people, it's a war zone. It yeah. never changes. It's dangerous for them where they live. It's dangerous for them wherever they go. So it, they, they can't escape from it. Colin, what, what kinds of trends have you seen in the last 10 years with young people? I've seen it turn from gang culture to youth culture. I've seen years ago, 90% of young people sold weed. Only 5% sold harder drugs. Now, 90% sell harder drugs and only 5% sell weed. The amount of money that is accessible on the road, the amount of guns and ammunition, because ammunition used to be hard to get. Now there's a lot of ammunition on the road. Mm. Zombie knives, the whole kind of mentality of killing and getting ratings for it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so all of those things have changed. It's quite a scary time as yeah, to, be, to be a young person. Colin, you, uh, Gangs Unite are doing so much phenomenal stuff and like just to hear about it, like you've got a building where young people can come and be creative and just like let go and enjoy themselves and express themselves. What, what, what's your vision for Gangs Unite? What's the future? The future is um, our, our young people are being targeted. I, I say hunted. I would like to get a hundred fathers that will come and join me. I see myself as a street father. I've done it by myself for nine years. 
and the impact I've had by myself, if it had another 10, 50, 100 men, we can change the actual culture and we can stop lots of our youths from being killed and going to prison. Colin, we've run out of time, but I know that people will want to be involved. I think they can, they can, and parents and young people can contact you directly and we'll put the link below for all of Colin's details, but equally they can reach out to you on www.gangsunite.co.uk. Thumbs up, Colin. Give me thumbs a thumbs up. up. Good. And we'll put all your social media links as well so you can find them, find you there. Okay. Yeah? Bless you. Thank you. And bless you for doing, like, this is real work that takes a lifetime and it can be tiring. But, you know, as a community, we support you and thank you for all the work that you're doing. Because actually, it's, even if you save one life, then that's one family and one community that don't have to deal with the tragic consequences. So thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. We'd love having you. Yeah. Guys, that's the end of our one-to-one -one interview with Colin James, um, CEO of uh, Gangs Unite. But like I said, you can find out more information in the links below, in below. So like, subscribe and do all those stuff that other uh, podcasts and videos tell you to do. So do that below. Uh, see you next week.